Welcome everybody. This is the Thursday evening Viper Trading Webinar. If you are here to learn about trading futures markets using the Viper tools, you are absolutamente in the correct place. Eh? Without further ado, let's knock out our standard disclaimer so we can get over to some charts and start looking at trades because that's of course why everybody's here. All communications from Viper Trading Systems are for educational purposes only. Futures trading does involve risk, and there is a risk of loss. Nothing contained in this webinar. Other webinars, including the live trading room, are to be construed as investment or trading advice. And everybody, of course, does know and hear that you do trade at your own sole discretion. Okay. Tonight's uh, topic is fairly broad in the sense that it said... Uh, Something to the effect of take the time to see great trade setups, but I see some comments coming in here. Uh, in, in fact, I can I can do that right now. Is uh, uh, take a, uh, jot down a few topics that you might want me to cover. Since looking for great trades is a pretty, <laughs> you know, uh, general wide open topic, so we could technically pretty much do kind of anything. Uh, Jay typed in here. Would you? discuss the trade setups that happen at trend changes. All right. Any other topics that we might want to cover in our look for great trades? Uh, Jay has asked for trade setups at trend changes. We'll cover that right away. I remember one from the live room. Does anybody remember this one? Something to the effect of when you have support and resistance levels, how to set them up, what, how, to set, how to find them and put the lines on the chart. And then how to look at them as areas. Remember that? Remember that topic? Some folks are having trouble, you know, seeing where to put lines. So we can definitely address that issue. And then and then we'll discuss how, um, you know, it's not just a line support and resistance. We like to think of it as a line because we just need to use a number when we called it out. But in fact, it is an area bounded by a few ticks on either side of that line. Okay, more topic suggestions coming in. Geo, somewhere I heard of a an indicator called True Trend. What is that? How is it better or not? And well, how is it currently used? You know, Geo, I don't have what I'm going to do on that one. I'm going to table that particular issue for Gary. Um, I have it somewhere in my repertoire of indicators here, but I don't have it loaded up. But I'll tell you what, Gary has it. Can, if you come to the live room in the morning when well, we're not in a trade, but you ask a small favor, just go ahead and bring that up again, and he can pop it up and, and take a couple of five minutes and show and explain it. Cool? Yeah, so we'll table that one for the live room. Um, Brian, best, best uh, bounce areas for trade entries? Okay. And then uh, well, how we look left when we're trading from Louis. Okay. That's a good full plate. All right, let's get over to um, a Russell chart and uh, on screen one over here. All right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to kind of orient everybody as to what you're looking at, because some of you are, are I think, literally brand new and, and, and actually seeing this for the first time. And so I'm going to start with the basics, and then we're going to build on that and work on it together. Now, we're connected to a data feed to our broker Ninja. So the data feed provides the real-time data uh, that forms the bars that you see right here. Now, and most of you know, of course, from the live room that we use four range bars on every chart. We've been doing that for like nine, ten years now, very consistently. So we don't change bar sizes. We don't change bar types. Four range is what you got. Now, the only exception to that is that uh, uh, I personally like to watch a two on ES, and we'll look at a two. It's a little faster. Um, I like that. If you don't like that, some people don't like it, stick with the four. Okay? Now, um, so if you just connected to your broker's data feed and you didn't have our indicators on here this would simply be green and red bars or you know whatever color bars from the dead just kind of going up and down and all around and it'd be really hard to see trades so what gary and i did long time ago is we created these indicators and the most prominent ones of course are the background colors 
So when you are in an uptrend, you're going to notice that the background is generally going to be green. Here's an example over here to the right. See the, see the bars going up? That's an uptrend, right? In an uptrend, uh, the, uh, in addition to the background being green, the bars will predominantly be blue. So here you can see there's some yellow bars sprinkled in, and we'll talk about that. But most of the bars are blue, okay? Uh, another prominent thing, of course, on here is the, and I'm going to blow this up so you can really see it real good, is the uh, this uh, thick line in the middle of eight bands. So we have this notion of one, two, three, four bands below the thick mid band here. And we have one, two, three, four bands above it. So band eight is at the top. Line uh, uh, in uh, the thin red line at the top of band two is called line two, of course. And, uh, and uh, the thin green line at the top of band six is called line six. That's line six right there. We have the power meters. These are the different trends, the different four types of trends from longer term trends to shorter term trends, power meters. Obviously, in a very pronounced long uptrend, they're all going to be green. Um, we have the predictors, which are the swing levels in real time. Little button to turn them on and off if you want to see them. You can kind of see them and then turn them back off again if you want. And then, of course, we have the alerts. Now, Gary has done and I've done complete webinars on the alerts. Um, they're extremely helpful. Let me see if I can turn a couple on here. Yeah, we can leave, we can leave those on. Let's leave the let's leave the mid-band ones on just for giggles. Okay? All right. Now, conversely, if you go into a downtrend, then let me see if I can find a really good a good sort of pronounced um, extended downtrend that might give you more of a sense of how that looks. Here, oh, here's a good one right here. Okay. So, a downtrend would be the opposite of course of the uptrend, which is the market is heading down. So in this case here, in this example, the background is predominantly red. Bars are predominantly red. Uh, the mid-band and all the bands are stair-stepping down, like a set of stairs, right? And you are mainly just looking for shorts. So you're selling into the market. You're selling into resistance. Long trades, short trades. Long trades, short trades. Okay? All right. The alerts flash when bars occur around the mid band if you turn them on. They help give you like a little bit of heads up that you're coming into a potential area to take trades. Now, for the sake of this exercise today, I'm I'm just going to turn those off. They're they're a really helpful tool. They're fairly new. They've been out for a few weeks. We they were in development for a while. But they're available now, and they're part of the Indicator uh, Viper package. Okay? All right. Let's go on. Now, let's talk about trade entries. In the case of the uptrend move, like this, and I'm going to do a pop quiz because I hear some snoring out there. I want to make sure everybody's awake. I'm going to, I think this is this morning. Let me double check what time this was, and I'll get you oriented real here, and we'll take a look at this. Uh, yeah, this is today. Today was, what, 20... 6th, 27th, I've been so busy today, what day is, yeah, 27th, okay, all right, good, let's go over here and take a look at something together, now, based on what you know, and some of you are completely new, so that's totally cool. I'm going to do a quick exercise here together. And we had a question about trend changes and how to trade them. So let's address that right now. When you think, now let's look at the right-hand side of the chart. And we can obviously see that the background is red in the case of the Russell. It broke support, turned the background red. And the bars are predominantly red. And so one could say that from this time period, oh, let me orient you here so, so everybody kind of gets a sense of what's going on. Midnight Pacific, I, I'm here in California, and most of you know that, uh, is right, um, where is that uh, date time thing? Oh, here we go. Okay. All right. 
All right, so the way this works is that the, the, to the left of this line, starting after the close, is the what we call the Asian trading session. Big banks in Hong Kong trading futures markets, yes? And then, of course, you have uh, the European session kicking off here. Big banks in London throughout Europe are trading futures. So futures turn on Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock Pacific, and then with the exception of a small turnoff period around 1 o'clock, for about 15 minutes, they run 24, what is that, 24 or 5, 24 or 5 and a half. So going into this European session from this morning overnight here, which would have been around 3 a.m. my time, we see there was a precipitous sell-off in the Russell. Now, I'm going to forward this, I'm going to advance this chart as if we're watching it together in real time in the European session. Now, when you think you see a trend change, you type in the letters TC. Okay? Ready? We're going to do this exercise together. I'm going to advance the chart slowly. And when you think you see a trend change, type in TC. All right? Here we go. 3.15 a.m. right here. European session earlier this morning. Here we go. There's 3.24 a.m., so add three hours for the East Coast. Remember, when you think you see a trend change, you type in the letters TC, signifying trend change. There's 3.35 a.m. right there. Okay, 3.59, 4 a.m. Pacific, 4.30 Pacific, 4.32 Looking for trend changes. 438. Okay, there's six, there's five o'clock. Remember, TC, the letters TC for a trend change. 502. 514. 540. 607. Uh, 630. There's the open of the U.S. market right there. U.S. equity market just opened. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to stop it right there. Now, I understand some of you are just looking at this for the first time. So you might not really sort of know. And that's to totally cool. We, you know, we understand that. Now, I do want to give gold stars and kudos to everybody for a couple of things. First of all, we can see that the drop was right here. Now, I'm not going to talk about how to trade that. Let's just, we clearly see it was a drop. It turned the background red, and we knew we were going into a downtrend. Okay. Now, when you look for trade entries in a downtrend uh, taking shorts, there are three types of entries. There's the minimum in, uh, uh, minimum uh, criteria trade, which would be defined as closing above stealth and line two. This would be a good uh, example of one here. There are mid-band shorts. Mid-band short would look something like this. And I can tell you that it's defined as the band immediately above and below the mid-band is considered, and on the mid-band itself, with like these bars right here. And this is called a deep probe or deep retracement, where you can go all the way out to line six. Now, notice when, when this happens here in this deeper retracement that the bars actually turn blue. Now, what was really cool was that nobody typed in TC or trend change when you did this deep probe retracement all the way to line six, it kissed it and rolled over. The background was still red. The trend was still down. And in fact, this is what's called a, um, a deep or uh, a deep probe, deep retracement, phantom trade, you might hear called out in the room. Uh, the alert you would set up for that is uh, potential trend change, minimum criteria, phantom. Phantom would be an example. So just to recap, in a downtrend, minimum criteria above line two, mid-band trade in and around the mid-band for shorts. We're selling into the downtrend, yes. 
then a deep probe, deep retrace, excuse me, or a phantom can go all the way out to this band six and kiss and touch off of line six, roll over, and this is still considered a legitimate short trade entry right here. So nobody in here typed in TC when this retracement happened, and that was totally cool, and that was excellent. Now, depending on how you drew these boxes, you may have been filled on, the, if you drew a tight box here using the object trader tool region box, you could have been filled potentially short on that close of that bar right there. So the way the tool works, and you see this in the room when Gary does it, uh, there's a panel over here, and most of you have seen it. If you haven't, you know, we can bring it up in the in the, in the morning. Um, I don't have it loaded here. I'm going to cover other topics, but it's a, just a big panel right here. Um, one of the main features we use on it is what's called a region box, where you can literally take the tool and engulf candles in locations where you would like to take trades. Here might be an example right here, a mid-band short. Here might be an example of some some candles you could have engulfed. And so when you see it in the room and we talk about uh, box that in, you might hear that quite frequently, is what we're actually referring to is the region box tool in Object Trader. Now, of course, there's other ways to get in these trades, right? You can put limit orders above and below where you want to get in. You don't have to use the region box. We really think you should because it's semi-automated tool. In other words, once it's all set up and you want to say trade two lot and you want to scalp out at six ticks and have a runner and then engage the trail and then let it all be automated and managed, OT is your tool. That's your go-to tool, right? Um, if you put limit orders in and you get filled long or short and don't use the region box, well, then you're going to have to manually put targets, right? Manually put your initial stops, manually move your, your trail stops up and down and what have you. And we help you with that in the room because we call it those levels. Now, back to our question about trend change. So nobody said in this deep retracement, and that was good because it was still a downtrend. Now, a lot of TCs came in when this move happened right here. Now, several things happen. Now, so when you speaking specifically to a trend change, a number of things happen when, when a market changes trends. Let's talk about this transition here, and we'll look at the opposite in the next uh, opposite of this one in, uh, in uh, another setup. So let's take the case where you were coming from a downtrend. So what we're discussing specifically is what's called trend, trend changes and how to trade them, right? Okay. Now, coming out of a downtrend, so let's just, let's, let's, let's put it right in here so we all can get, you know, sometimes when you type and read things, it helps the memory, you know, record what you're, what you're seeing. Let's say this, coming out of a downtrend, what can happen? In other words, do you always go from a downtrend right into an uptrend? Does that always happen? What else could, what else, what else might happen if you're coming out of a downtrending move? What two possibilities that you have when coming out of a downtrend what there's two things that can happen okay i'm going to put two i'm going to put a number one here and a number two and you you tell me what you think i should write in, under number one and next to number two what should be filled in here when you're coming out of a downtrend what two things can happen and there are two Okay, and we're going we're gonna to fill them in together as a team here. Well, we see what happened over here. Looking at this one, we came out of the downtrend and we went into what? You can change or transition into an uptrend, right? That's what we looked at right here. That that's exactly what happened. And you, many of you typed in TCs when you saw that happen. 
Now, what else could happen? Yeah, it could be uh, uh, it could be sideways, Mario. That's right, sideways or range bound. So it could change or transition into sideways, which is also referred to as range uh, a range range bound condition, right? Range bound. Now, of course, you can see in the condition we have here on this particular chart, we went directly from uh, from a downtrending move to to an uptrend here. So characteristics of changing to an uptrend are that the swing levels are broken to the upside. This is called the thrust, initial thrust part of the uptrend transition. Generally speaking, that background will now turn to green. You will get a predominant uh, uh, predomination of blue bars. You're also going to see, uh, I didn't talk too much about this, this is another indicator. Uh, it can go two ways. This is called the stealth. It looks like a little sort of sneaky snake line following. We use this for trail stops a lot of times, right? You hear that called out in the live room. Put your trail stops around stealth at, you know, whatever level, 15, 25 or whatever. Um, so when you start heading up, of course, you get you get the you get the green stealth. So here's a green stealth here, green stealth, green stealth, green stealth all the way up. In the case of the short trade, of course, you get the red stealth. The red stealth is the sneaky snake line that sort of follows the market down. And it can be used as a trail stop. You see that, Louis? Yeah. So most of you typed in TCs, trend change from down to up, when this thrust occurred right here, and that was correct, right? You took out the swing, background turned green, bars are blue, uh, mid-band starts to start to get ready to stair step on up, and a, a green stealth shows up, and off you go. Now, based on what you know, now from what we showed in this transition, is this a long trade? And you got five seconds to answer this, okay? Is this a legitimate long trade, yes or no? Five seconds on the clock, cast your vote with a Y, boop, N for no, N, boop. Is this box a legitimate long trade, yes or no, Y for yes, boop, four seconds, N for no. Cast your vote, team. Three seconds, two seconds. Speaking of, uh, about this box, legitimacy as a long trade entry. One second, cast your vote. All right, time's up. Okay, now let's take the opposite of our short trade entry technique. As you recall in the short trade entries, we have minimum criteria was above line two. Mid band was on or around mid band, right? Short. And the deeper tracement goes could go as far as line six and even turn the bars blue, but it's still legitimate short because you're in a downtrend. Now, conversely, when you go into an uptrend, the um, trade setups are similar, but they're low, they are named a little bit different, but they occur in a similar manner. So, for instance, a mid-band trade in an uptrend would be here in and around the mid-band. However, we're getting long, not short, right? A minimum criteria trade would be to close below um, the stealth line, which is the green line here, and line six. So, in terms of a minimum criteria long trade, it would be shown by this one right here. So if you answered yes, you were correct. That was a minimum criteria long trade entry. Now, of course, the minimum trade sh short entry is now what's called the deep retracement entry long here, all the way to line two. And these bars might, I, and I'll look for this case for you, might actually turn red. Now, we teach these three trade entry types all the time. We have for years details, entry types. We teach them. We show them. We take them in the live room. I take them on my live account. Gary takes them on his live account. And so they are legitimate. They're real and they're trades. Now, that being said, I want to say something to everybody here tonight and listening on the recording. 
all these trade entries are not the same. Okay, some are easier to see and take than others. What do I, what do I mean by that? Let's talk about the long side here. Let's talk about each one real quick. Okay, I'll talk about the short and the long, and then we're going to go look for some more trades. Okay. Here's the three on the long side in the uptrend. Now, I saw some people type this in, and I totally hear you. Some people just typed in, in, in un, unrequested, but still it's good to volunteer this information, that they have challenges seeing and taking minimum criteria trades. Or maybe you've taken a minimum criteria trade for whatever reason on whatever you know instrument or chart or whatever and it didn't work out and then you take another one and it doesn't work out and you can't see it and you get stopped out and it's not for some reason this is a very low percentage trade entry for you now if that is the case should you continue to take this type of trade yes or no in other words you see it you understand it you come to webinars and you know what it is but when you go to execute it, for some reason, and I, you know, I might be speaking to some of you here tonight, it just doesn't work out. You get in too late, you get in too early, it doesn't go your favor, it stops out, whatever the reason is. Yes, that's me. Okay. I only take those if there's a lot of support to the left, says Brian. I take it if, it's completely con if I'm completely confident and it is a strong trend. Okay, good. Well, that's the point I'm trying to make. Now, likewise, comment on the deep retracement trades. And I'm going to, okay, so let me circle them on both sides so we can talk about them, each one. Minimum criteria short would be here, right? So it's the same comment as that, only on the short side. Let's talk about the other one, and then I'll come back to mid-band, okay? So in the case of the short side, there's your deep probe phantom type entry short. And in the case of, of the of the retracement down into line two on the long side, this would be your your deep probe phantom retracement long, and the bars might actually turn red down in here and bounce. Legitimate long trade in an uptrend. Some people struggle with this one. For instance, over here in this short example, they a lot of trade we get this feedback all the time, and it's totally okay. That but when the bars turn blue in a downtrend, it it you know disturbs them, freaks them out. They don't like it. It makes them think the trend is changing, even though it isn't. And so that's totally okay. So the, if this is a low percentage trade for you, and that's a low percentage, and that's low, and these are all low percentage trades, well, you're going to have to work at trying to get them into your repertoire of trade arts tools eventually. But, you know, you can only practice on them in sim. Now, that all being said, I can say that one trade that you really, really, really should try to master is the two mid-band entries like here on the long side buying support and the long uh, trade entry short right in that area right here in and around the mid-band this is pretty much my go-to trade every day i mean occasionally i'll take minimum criteria entries or a deep probe or deep retracement or a phantom I'll occasionally take those if it's a strong, powerful trend and I haven't gotten in yet and I don't have a choice and it's not going back to the mid-band. Sure, I'll take a minimum criteria. I have to because I'm going to miss the whole thing, right? Yeah, and I take these deep ones too. But I really, really love, most of you know, of course, in the live room, I, I love taking these. I love calling these out. I just love mid-band trades. They're just so good because there's normally 20 to 24 ticks in the case of the long trade between the apex of this move here to the outermost portion of band eight if you do the math from here to here so there's sufficient meat on the bone if this thing bounces it's quite possible you could get to here and there's 20 ticks right from here to here on a retracement and we'll look at examples of this if it bounces in this area, you're going to get, you could quite possibly get a scalp to here, and normally that's about 10 or 12 ticks to line six. That's why we always say that. I'll take a mid band bounce and I'll take a scalp trade at line six on the long side, right? And I'm looking for a runner to continue up through the swing here, like this, which it did, right? Now, 
On the short side, similar situation here. When you take a deep re retracement short, your first goal in this case here, in this scenario short, is you want to get back at least to the mid-band for your scalp. And in this case, you got all the way back down to line two. So this turned out to be a very nice, probably 15 tick short trade right there. See it? Now, that is the three basic short trade entries. That is the three basic long trade entries, how they're taken and where they're located. Are there any questions? Because now I'm going to go forward and we're going to do a number of exercises where you're going to call the trades out when I advance the chart. Is everybody ready? Any final questions on this? We just explained everything in pretty good detail. Okay. I don't see any. All right. Let's do an exercise together. I'm going to advance the chart for this morning on the Russell. And I'm going to start right around when the market opened. The equity market's at 6.30. And I'm going to put a vertical line right here where it did open. And I'm going to go advance for maybe the first 15 minutes. Now, when you see, I'm going to help you out in this first exercise. It's going to be long trades only. Okay? The trend is up. There's no shorts. I'll help you. So when you see a long trade entry set up on this chart after 6.30, you type in the letter L, signifying that you would take a long trade. Are you ready to start? Okay, good. Here we go. Russell chart, 6.30 a.m. right here on this vertical line, right? Oops. Yeah, right there. Okay. Here we go. Now remember, when you see what you believe to be a long trade entry, based on what we've described here, here were the description of the long trade entries, minimum criteria, mid-band, and deep. That's the three types, yes? You type in L. Here we go. Okay, there's 6.30. Equity markets open in the U.S. Trading has begun. 6.31, 6.32. 6.32. I pull up the chart a little bit so I make the bars a little bit bigger so you can see them better. There we go. That's a little better for you. Yeah, 6.32, 6.33. Remember, you're looking for long trades in the uptrend. You think that you when you think you see one, you're gonna type in an L. Okay, there's 6.36 a.m. Pacific. 6.37. 6.39, 6.40, continuing on, 6.42, 6.47, 6.50, all right, I'm going to stop right there, coming up on 7 a.m. Pacific. All right, now looking back that you see the whole thing in front of you, how many long trades were there? Just count them up and type in a number. Now that you see the whole thing in front of you, you have the benefit of hindsight. So the reason I do this exercise is because I'm advancing the chart recreating real time because when you have real time, you can't see into the future, right? You don't, on the right-hand side, you don't know what these bars are over here, right? You don't know what the bars are over there. So I advanced the chart, and we're looking at it together. And so you have to develop the skill set to see the trade setups as they are occurring. And when you can do that, then you know where to get in, and obviously these are long trades. I see various numbers coming in here. Uh, Ty says three, Thomas says four, a lot of fours. David Louis at four, Wilfred says, what are those yellow plotted numbers? Okay, he's asking about pivot swings. These things right here, these yellow numbers, those are pivot swings. Uh, five, four, seven from Frank, Woo! eight from Dennis, and a lot of fives. All right, let's count them together. How about this one right in here? 
Does that qualify? What do you think? Is it below? What was our minimum criteria definition here, remember? Is it below line six and below stealth? Okay, so there's number one, right? Okay, good. A lot of you got that one. Good. Okay, how about over here? How about right here? Does that meet the minimum criteria? And how about here? What about these bars right here? Now, how, I'm going to circle this one. How about this one? Does that count? That one right there? So how many we got so far? We got one, two, three. What about that little hanging chad, little doji thing? Does that count? Is that a number four? Huh? Ixnay on the O-nay. No. No, you got to have... Look at the difference between this one little wick of this doji versus the meat. You know, you get down in here and you get, you know, a whole bunch of candles forming and sitting down here for a while. See it? Below stealth. Below stealth. Below line six. A little wick of a candle doesn't count. That, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to say that was legit. I'm going to take that one off the table. How about here? Is this one right here? Is this a mid-band trade? Yellow bars sitting on the mid-band? That's number four. And then some of you probably would want to count this one because I think I took it this far to 652. It would be right here. That's mid-band number two. Mid-band number one, long. Mid-band number two. So counting... One, two, three, no, four, five. If you said five, four or five, I think you're right on. Good. Total kudos. In a short span of time, you've picked up trade entries. Now, the next step, now that you know where they're located, you know what to do in the direction of the trend, long or short, the next thing is to take and try to sort of project out or predict ahead of time where a trade might occur. Let's use a different chart. What do we want to put up here next? Uh, we could do crude. We could do gold. We could do ES. I want to do a different chart. What do you want to see? And we're going to do some trade predictions together. So in the last exercise, I advanced the chart in real time, and you picked up you collectively, everybody in here tonight, said, yes, okay, I see a long. Yes, okay, I, I, see, I see that. Minimum criteria. Yes, I see a long. I see a mid-band long, et cetera, et cetera. We got a healthy mix of requests for both crude oil and ES. So we got about 20 minutes left. Let's go ahead and try to get both in here. Let's start with crude. Now I'm going to help you on a couple of these, and then I'm going to have you do a couple on your own. And we'll close out with the yes. How's that sound? Okay. I'll start with some easier ones, and then we'll work into the more difficult ones. Let's do an easy one. Want to do an easy crude one together? All right. Here we go. This is exercise number two on a crude chart. Okay, on the right-hand side of the chart, over here, you can see that this was the morning of the, uh, what day was this? Was this today? Yeah, okay. Midnight Pacific time, to convert that to your local time, was right here. So in the European trading session, all the way up in the pre-market till about 5 a.m. Pacific, it was sideways to down, and you were looking to take shorts. Here's a short here. Here's a short here at the mid-band. Minimum criteria short here, and another mid-band short. Now, right around 5.30-ish, you get this thrust where this swing is taken out here. So I'm going to help you out a little bit. And then let me advance the chart to where I want to show it, over here, which would have occurred, well, it looks like just a, just a few minutes, 
before the 6 a.m. pit open, the market looked like this. So if you open up your charts just before 6, maybe, I don't know, a couple of 10, 15 minutes before 6 a.m. crude pit open, and you're wanting to trade crude, your chart would look more or less like this chart, like this right here. So what you may have made note of, and I hope you do, and you know, tomorrow morning you should maybe look at it this way, is that we now have a thrust up like this. We are no longer in a downtrend. We've taken out all these swing levels to the upside here, here, and here. And the background has turned green. The the um, the bars are predominantly blue. The mid band is beginning in all the bands, stair stepping in an upward manner like such. And so now that you know what you know, you know that you are looking for long trade entries, right? Now, that being said, you wouldn't obviously buy the market at 59.17. So, so by the way, if this is a, if this is something that sort of plagues your trading, where you wait, 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 and then all of a sudden, you know, a market has a burst. You see the burst. You're convinced it's going up. You pull the trigger only to buy the top of the move. And sure enough, the thing retraces 10, 12, 15 ticks and stops you out, and then continues on upward. Show of hands, how many of that happened to you, any of you in here? I know I used to do that all the time. I know it too well. Yep. So what you want to do, obviously, is you want to break that habit. You want to break that habit. When a market is thrusting in a trend direction, in, in this case up, you want to patiently sit on your hands and wait for the retracement to occur. Now, now that we're patiently waiting, if and when this market pulls back, where might it pull back to? Where would you look to get long on crude here? You want some help? Let me help you out. Let me help you out with a couple of things here. Well, you know, if you're going to draw lines like Gary does in the room, might we want to put a line somewhere in here? What do you think? Now let's talk about that for a second. Now, why would we want to put a line here? And what does the line actually mean? Well, let's talk about it for a second. Would you agree that there is sort of a chunk of bars that are sitting here and a chunk of bars that are sitting right in here and a chunk of bars that are sitting right in here? that form little shelves of, of support and resistance. And so when we come to think about support and resistance, we have to remember that they are areas. An area is bounded by several ticks on either side of the line. So one might say, I see support around the 59 area, but in fact what that means is that it could come slightly above it and it could come slightly below it in the area of the rectangle I've drawn around it right here. Is that not true? Right? Could come slightly below it, could come slightly above it, could come very close to going on it. We don't know. And so that is the real challenge of trading. That's a big chunk of the ch challenge of trading. If, if everything all retraced the same perfectly every time, trading would be a piece of cake. We would just say, well, well just put a buy order there. We'll just buy one. It comes right there. Boom. We buy it. Done. But we know the world market doesn't work that way. Okay. The market's changing all the time. It's going up, down, sideways, and we're trying to figure it out. Okay. So let me help you with this one. If the market retraced into this area right here in and around the 59 line that we just drew as support, would that qualify as a minimum criteria long entry trade if it got into that box right there where I've drawn it. Furthermore, I submit to you that if it came a little bit lower into this area here around 93 where the mid-band sits, would this not be a mid-band long trade bounce potentially down in here? Yes or no? I'm drawing these boxes. Yes or no? 
So when the market is up here at 59.17, and we are not already long managing a trail stop. In other words, we did not get in from lower levels, and so we're not in a trade. So that means, by definition, we are looking for a trade entry. Now, what I do, and this is the whole thing about looking left to trade right, is that the way that we look left is we look to support and resistance areas, and we put lines there just like Gary does in the room. You can put lines exactly where he puts them, or what else could you do? Could you look to the left and put your own lines on your own charts? Would that be possible? Do you think that would be helpful? Yeah, of course it would. The reason these lines really help and come into play is because you can see where prior support resistance areas are. Normally they will coincide with normally like a mid band or a line two or a line six, a line six or a line two it will correspond to one of those areas. So let me, let me be clear about what I'm saying here. When a market is up here, we know we can't buy or sell the thrust. We're not already long and we are looking to get long. We look down below where this is, we know we've gone into an uptrend, so we're looking for longs. And so what we need to envision in our trading minds, and this takes a little bit of work, but it's worth it, is we're saying if it comes down into here, or it comes down into here, or perhaps if it goes even as deep as here, and bounces, we would look to do what? James, I already said that. I already addressed that. You might come in late. It's okay. I'll tell you in a second. Uh, I, 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 I see what you're saying. I, I already addressed that, but I'll, I'll, we'll go back over it again. Yeah, you would look to buy long. You would look to buy long if it came into here and bounced. You would look to buy long if it came in and around the mid-band. That would be a mid-band trade long. And if it comes deeper, you're prepared for that too. So when we're looking at this, we have already drawn a line here and we're anticipating that something's gonna happen. Now I'm going to advance this and recreate 6 a.m. Pacific on crude oil. And you tell me when the long trade fires. Are you ready? Here we go. Okay, we're coming up on 6.01. Blow up the bar is a little bigger there. Type in an L when you're going to get long. Type in an L when you're going to get long. It's retracing. We've drawn our sweet spots. We have our line. We have our mid-band box. And we have an anticipation of where we are going to take the trade long on crude. Is this mic on? Checking mic. Mic one, two, three. Mike, one, two, three, anybody hearing me out there? I hear a lot of snoring. That's why I didn't mean to wake anybody up there. You know, just make sure you get a little snorty or espresso. There's 607. And there's 617. How many of you in this room, I just spent five to ten minutes drawing these boxes and explaining in great detail that if the market comes back anywhere inside of these three boxes, that you will buy it and you will get long. And these bars did exactly what we said it would do. It came right on it. Every single, and I'm not mad. Don't get me wrong. I'm not upset. I know it might sound like I'm upset, but I'm not. I'm really not. I swear to you. Didn't these bars come right on where we just drew it? Right here that these bars come right where we said to get in. Everybody here tonight, and there's a ton of people there, should type in a yes. And if you didn't type in an L right there on those bars, then you missed it. And you know what? That's why we hear this all the time in the live room. We get frustrated people, and we understand that, you know, especially if you're just learning it. It's totally cool. But when, when we're in the live room and you're trading crude, and the market is sitting here at 59.17, and you hear a comment to the effect of, if that, if that 
crude retraces anywhere around 59 or even lower around the mid band at 96, 93 and bounces, I will take a long trade. You hear that all the time. We do that all the time on these retraces. And sure enough, the bars came right to it, right to it. This is a long trade entry right here. Now, if you don't see that, that's okay. That just means that you have to practice seeing it. Let's do another one. It takes time. Sure. You know, this it, the system takes a little time to learn, and that's perfectly okay. You know, what's that old saying? Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, your house wasn't built in a day. It takes time. Let's do another one together real quick, and then I'll go to, and I want to pop ES up before we run out of time. Okay, I think people's problem is they don't know how to enter on a bounce. Well, you know, that's a good point, but you have to be able to see it. If you don't see it, you can't take it. So there's actually two separate topics of interest are there, right? There's the part of seeing it and knowing where to take it, and then there's the actual taking it part. So on this next exercise, let's do that together. Here we can see from this minimum criteria entry, and it wicked actually into the mid-band area, just under 59, long trade entry. You went from, uh, this is it set up at around 6.03 a.m. Pacific, so about three minutes after the pit open, right here, 6.02, you're filled long out of the box or limit order, however you got in, by hook or by crook, you're long here. And you trail it up, and I don't know, maybe you get taken out at 42. So this was actually a uh, 40 tick trade. $400 per contract. A two lot on that would be eight bones, and most of you, I would bet, would be done. That would be a one and done trade right there. Right here, from here to here, 40 ticks, $10 a tick, $400 a contract. Even with a one lot, if your goal was $500 a day, you're within 100 bucks of it. Brian says that was a fantastic trade. I actually took that one today. I think Gary did too. I don't think I was in the room on that one. I missed that one. All right. So let's say you didn't get it. That's totally cool. Now we're up here at 59.50. So let's do that same exercise we did again. Only now we're at 638, 640. And if the market pulls back to where might we want to get long? Let's do another exercise together. Some of you are still learning this, and that's, and that's okay. So a minimum criteria would fall in here, right? True. And a uh, and a mid band retracement would fall into this area right here. So we're going to first identify areas of potential long entry, and then I'm going to advance the chart. And you're all going to call out when you would enter the trade. And then we're going to discuss the entry itself. And then if it just so happens that crude pulls back a little deeper, it could go all the way down into here. So these are the three areas of long trade entry opportunity. Yes? Minimum criteria, it comes in here and bounces. Mid-band comes into this zone right here and bounces. And deep retracement comes down into here and bounces somewhere located down near maybe line two. All right, now I'm going to advance the chart, reconstructing real time at 6:30 a.m. Uh, 6:40 a.m. Pacific time. And when you think that the long entry is set up to take, you type in the letter L. Here we go. Okay, there's 6:41. By the way, anybody in the room remember what I said when this happened right here? Is anybody in the live room when this happened right here? This this happened, those bars, those little collection of about three, four, five, six bars right there. Anybody remember that? What I said in the room? Anybody remember? It's okay. Some of you probably weren't even in there. Then I say it's looking like it, Gary isn't look like it's top and not and you're running out of gas at, at 5950. Anybody remember that? Brian does. Mario. It's slowing down. It's running out of gas. It's hitting its head. Double top set number 59.50 as it was happening. And subsequent to that, in fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reconstruct this trade, but then I'll tell you what I said because I actually took this. 
Remember, you're typing in a long when you're going to take the trade. Six forty two, double top and it's six fifty. Six fifty one. So it took a while for it to retrace, you know, and it's hard to believe that when it's hitting fifty that it's gonna pull back. That's the dismay and the frustration that a lot of traders and I, I get it, I feel it too. You know, it's running away, running away, you missed it, and you, you're sitting on your hands waiting for a pullback, thinking it's never gonna happen. And sure enough, here it starts to pull back. It pulls back. It's pulling back. And what does it hit? What does it hit? Where does it land? Where does it bounce? Where does it come right to? Anybody? Right there. I did it. I'm doing it like three, four times so you see it. What do you think? Now, we drew these ahead of time. In fact... Those of you that were in there, and who was in there? Was that Mario, Brian, and a couple other ones? I said, when it was sitting here at the double top at 50, and I'd drawn a line from a swing from way over here that just happened to land right around that 25, 26 area. I had a line drawn right here on my charts, just like that, right from there. See it? See it over here? And remember? If it comes anywhere near that mid band around 20, 25, 26 and bounces, I will look to buy and get long on a bounce there. Here's the area we were looking for right there. That was the sweet spot of it. And sure enough, sure enough, sure as the plane on nose on my face, it came and it hit it right here on the button. Right there. There it is. That's that's just textbook mid-band trade right there. It doesn't get any better than that. That's a Wikipedia snapshot, screenshot, put it in the annals of taking the mid-band long on crude right there. And look at what this trade turned into. It had a nice pop way up here. And you got all the way up to, uh, well, it stopped out here. You got all the way to 64, was it, I think? This doesn't look like much, but this was actually a 40-tick pop. I know Gary put two lot on here. He's talking about making eight hundred dollars on that pop, right there. You know that's all you need. One or two of these a day, and you'll be done. You'll be close to or at your goal. And you'll be turning off that machine, going into sim or going off and having breakfast, playing some golf or whatever you like to do. That was a total kaching. All right, I promised an ES. Let's get an ES up here real quick. Now, ES was, has been has been choppy in the morning, and uh, having moves later on in the morning, so I know that can be frustrating. I used to love to trade ES. I've kind of moved away from it a little bit. In the fact that the early mornings are just so choppy, it's just it's just mind-numbingly choppy that you know you're just waiting, waiting, waiting for something to pop, and then it finally does, and You had to, you know, sit around all day to get it. Uh, I'll show a four and then I'll show a two. Oh, this is yesterday. Let me get today up. Where's today? Yeah. Yeah, it was a sloppy mess. It was a sloppopotamus mess. Here, let me get it up for you. Oh, Ty, I missed your question. I missed your question. I'm sorry. I just saw your question. My apologies, Ty. Um, I already have a yes up here. Um, I think there was a minimum criteria. Yes. Yes. Before the mid-band trade set up, there was a minimum criteria. But if you boxed in with Object Trader, I don't think you would have been filled. As I recall, I think it stayed under line six. I, I could go back and look at that. But I'm running out of time here, so let me just very quickly... Excuse me, get, get doing ES here. Sorry about that, Ty. I just saw your question. Um, so Midnight Pacific on ES was right here. This is a four. Like I said, you can use it to um, 
and this was overnight. So the 6.30 Pacific was right here. And Gary opened the room actually more like right here, 6 a.m. Pacific. Well, no, it's 5.55, so he had the open. And I'm sure he had an ES chart up somewhere in there, 6.16, 5.55. Yeah, so he was actually opening it up here. So in terms of ES, Let me ask you a couple of questions. I, I'm, I don't have time to do the whole reconstruction of the of the of the real time event, but I'm going to ask you two questions, and we're going to see if you can answer it correctly. Is this an example of a minimum criteria entry long on ES? Yes or no? Right here, five seconds. Three seconds, just a wire net. Yes, minimum criteria, yes or no. That would have occurred right about 6.40 a.m., 10 minutes into the pit, into the uh, US equity open. One second, time's up, yes. We closed below stealth and we closed below line six. That's a legitimate minimum criteria entry right there, long. Now, is this, a mid-band long entry right here. Yeah, this is the minimum criteria here too. But let's let's answer this question first. How about that? How about this? Is this a mid-band trade? Are these minimum criteria? Yes. Is this one here? Yes. Was this one filled? Probably. Was this one filled? Probably not. Mid-band trade. Let me show you a little more granularity around those and why I use a two uh, on this. Um, and you may want to try a two. It's, it's faster. You get twice as many bars, so you get much more detail around the entry level itself, and that's why I like it. Um, You know, you can see here that trying to take minimum criteria uh, entries when a market is fairly range bound, especially on something like ES, presents a real challenge, right? Because it's so close to where the top is that there's just not a lot of meat on the bone, right? Now here's a two. Let me show you the two from the enter from the uh, from the uh, uh, from the open. It would look more like this. See how much more detail you get in here? I believe this one at 7.15 was a long trade we called out right here. This was a long trade we actually called out right here. I actually took that one. Um, is this minimum criteria and could you got faked out with a scalp and then stopped out? Yes. That's why, truth be told, I don't, I don't really, I don't really take a lot of the minimum criteria ones. I, I don't, I see them. I'll call them in the room, but I really don't take them. I'll take a mid-band trade. I took this one, and I believe I took this one. Yeah. So I'm gonna take the. So I'll leave the boxes here to illustrate the fact that they did, they did occur, but this one would never have been filled. And you can clearly see that the distance between when you get filled on a bar coming out of that box. And where resistance is, is pretty tight because you're in a range. Can you see resistance is here? So you can obviously see in this case here, in the case of ES, there wasn't much meat on the bone. Because in order to get out, you have to fade that swing by at least three or two or three or four ticks. And so, you know, if you, if you got a scalp off, you would be lucky. In my view, that's a lot of risk. Now, in this case here, this minimum criteria turned out pretty well, right, at the open because the algos are pumping. And you got maybe, I don't know, 10 or 12 ticks out of that one. This one stopped out for a loss probably if you got out quickly. And then this one turned out to be uh, 26.50 to 30. I remember calling this out and I, I took this one and I stopped out. Gary took this one too. Can you see that the distance between the mid-band 
and the swing up here near uh, band eight, that there's a lot, you know, there's plenty of meat on the bone, that if we get back up here, you stand to make 20 ticks or more. Yeah, we don't, uh, Ty, we don't run back tests on that. That's that's something that, it, it, and the reason for that is that the types of setups that you get for the minimum criteria are, are really varied on all the different instruments, how you get filled, where you put the box, how deep it retrace, where you get in, where you get out. And that's why I said, and then somebody said this earlier, minimum criteria trades, if you practice taking these, and you stop out and you lose money on them, then should you continue to take them? And what was the answer about a half an hour ago when I asked that question? Anybody? If you take minimum criteria trades over and over again, for some weird reason, you always seem to stop out and they turn into losers, should you continue to take them? Of course, the answer is no. Are we going to continue to teach it? Yeah. Is it a legitimate trade? Of course. Is it going to happen in the room? Are we going to show it and explain it and teach it and trade it and some people take it? Yes. Should everybody in here tonight take it? Probably not. Right? So the combination that's going to make you successful if you want to trade futures part-time for fun or for a living is you have to find um, the a compatible, the most compatible futures instrument for your trading style. For some of you, that's going to be ES. For some of you, that's going to be crude. For some of you, that might be the Russell. For a view of you, that might be NASDAQ, that might be AM, that might be gold. It might be one of the currency futures like 6E in the dollar index. Instrument selection is critical and key to your long-term success. You could know all these trades. You could show them on a chart. But if you pick the wrong instrument and you just can't seem to get it down, then that instrument is going to beat you up. It's that simple. The second thing that's going to really help you out is find a trade entry type. that you really like on your instrument of choice and then I'm going to state the obvious get really good at it so that's why we say things like you know I'm going to show you a deep retracement or you know a phantom trade we're going to show you minimum criteria entries we're going to teach you mid-band trades. All these things will be illustrated to you. But just because we teach them doesn't mean that you have to take them. You have to find the instrument that you really like, work with it every day, make it your best friend, and then and then really start to get to find. I love mid-band trades on ES. I'll take them all morning long. Seriously. If there's an uptrend or a downtrend and that puppy ES comes anywhere around that mid-band and the market's moving in a very behaved manner, I will take it. I will take it all the time, all morning, every day. This one right here. This would be a textbook trade for me that I took this morning right on the button right there. That's the type of trade I'm looking for. I like ES. I like mid-band trades. I like the Russell. I like mid-band trades. Crude, I love mid-band trades. I don't know what words to say, right? I don't trade much gold, occasionally gold, but it would be a mid-band trade. All right, Louie. Okay, Ty. Uh, no, I don't, Ty, I don't think what I'm, sh you know, what we're showing here and what Gary teaches hasn't really changed. Our trade entry techniques have not changed. Now, the amount of volatility in the market has changed. And, you know, uh, if there's a lot of tweets, if there's trade tension speculation, if there's problems in the Gulf, if there's a, a bad GDP report, whatever the circumstances are. Fed raises interest rates, Fed cuts interest rates. There's a, uh, you know, hundreds of things that can happen, news events, etc., all over the world. So obviously from day to day and week to week, some of that stuff changes. But the trade entry techniques that we're showing here and the instruments that we trade, that doesn't change. 
the room has been the same like that for years and years. We haven't changed any of that. Four range bars, same charts, same entry techniques. So that's why we're trying to say if you can learn just simply one or two instruments and one or just even one trade entry technique, you can make money every morning. And that's really what you want, consistency. Okay, okay, I'm going to stop the recorder.